Does your workshop get cold in the winter? Mine does. And have you ever wondered what happens to your wood glue when it's freezing? Does it freeze solid? Does it change how it works? Does it defrost properly? And ultimately, does it actually work the same when it's defrosted? Wow, that is amazing. What's up woodworkers, Ben here, and I've decided to test what happens when wood glue freezes, and you won't believe the results. It's like a paste. So to do this, I need a few things. Some wood glue, some wood, and of course, a freezer. Now, I had most of this stuff already, but I went out and picked up a few different types of wood glue that you typically find in a hobbyist workshop. So I guess now I just need to put it in the freezer. Won't be needing those. The glues I got are Type Bond 3, Evo Stick Wood Glue, the original Gorilla Polyurethane Glue, CA or Super Glue, and Cascomite, which is a powdered resin wood glue. Science! Now, before I froze the glues, I glued up a control joint with each one. These will come in useful later on. Now I've done all that, all that's left to do is to sit back and wait a few days. All right, so after about a week, it was ready to come out. I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. Well, they definitely feel frozen. Let's get them back into the workshop. Right, the first thing I thought I'd do is give this stuff a good poking to see if it's frozen solid or if any of it's still soft. Pokey pokey. So let's try poking the tight bond first. Yep. That's definitely frozen solid, so it's going to need a bit of time before I can use that. Let's move on to the Evo Stick PVA. Same story here, rock solid. That's two for two. I'm going to give the Gorilla Polyurethane glue a go next. Ooh, feels a bit softer. Check it out. The screwdriver's definitely making a mark on it, and it's definitely softer than the last two because I can scoop it out a bit but it's definitely still too thick to actually use properly at the moment. It certainly won't take as long to get back into a usable format though, that's for sure. Right, let's take a look at the CA glue. I'm not sure if you can see this properly on camera, but this stuff definitely seems like it stayed in liquid form, which is very interesting. Let's see if it'll pour out. Yep, there it goes. So this stuff should be usable. Last up, we've got the cascomite. This stuff is a powder rather than a liquid, so I'm pretty confident it shouldn't be frozen solid. Yep, yeah, that still looks exactly like it should. Doesn't even need poking. So it's apparent very quickly that the tight bond, the Evo stick, and even the Gorilla glue were not usable straight out of the freezer. So I'm gonna have to leave them to defrost and then we'll try them later on. However, the CA glue, super glue, doesn't seem to be affected at all. The cascomite, I've mixed up a batch of it. That's looking pretty good as well. So I'm going to glue up my test pieces with the cascomite and the super glue and see how we get on. So just to make sure I don't get anything mixed up at any stage, I'm labeling all my test pieces in the same way I did the control glue ups. That way I shouldn't get anything mixed up. So I applied the glues in exactly the same way and clamped them up for a day or two just to let the glue fully cure. Now this brings us on to today's fake sponsor and that is the incredible disappearing pencil. Just take your pencil, pop it down anywhere in the workshop, and boom, it's gone. The disappearing pencil knows just when you might need it, just when you get your work lined up, and it's gone. Drawing a line for a second with your ruler, pop it down, and gone. You finish using it. Oh, I've accidentally dropped it on the floor. And it's gone. And thanks to the incredible disappearing pencil for sponsoring this video. Ah, come on! All right, so it's been a day since I took the glue out of the freezer. These three were frozen solid, so I couldn't use them. I've had a look at them since then. And I think they're all usable. So I'm going to glue up my final test pieces with these three, and then we can get on to the actual testing. Now, interestingly, this Evo Stick PVA glue, although being fully defrosted, has definitely not gone back to its original consistency. It's turned into a really thick kind of paste. So I've scooped out a bit and I'll see if I can still make a join with it. It's gone a bit rubbery though, and it doesn't spread very well. Almost feels like it's partially set already, to be honest. Pretty weird. Right, so I've just taken the last clamps off of these joints and I've invested in a brand new scientific piece of equipment. Really high tech. 
called a science bucket. Okay, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to hang this onto my test piece and drop weights into it until it falls apart. Let's get stuck in. Now, I know what you've been thinking, this guy lifts weights. So I'm just going to finish off my reps here. And then when I've finished off testing the guns, I can use these to test my joints. So here we go. Test number one is going to be the Type Bond 3 control piece. The control pieces are the ones that I glued up prior to freezing the glue, so they should be operating at maximum capacity. So you can see I'm stuffing loads of plates and dumbbells in here, and I'm currently up to 35 and a half kilograms or 78 and a quarter pounds. The bucket's looking pretty full, but let's put another five kilograms or 11 pounds in, which will bring the total up to 40.5 kilograms or 89 pounds. Oh, there it goes. All right, so let's move on to the test piece and see how we get on. Now, I stacked it in exactly the same way, and here we are at 35.5 kilograms or 78 and a quarter pounds. But it turned out the old science bucket simply isn't up to the task. So much for the heavy duty bucket. So I needed to think up something else, which meant I needed to donate my badass chain. Wow, I was trying not to strangle myself in the process. This, with the padlock and an offcut of plywood, is what I've come up with. I drilled a hole in each corner of the plywood and ran the chain through it. I'm gonna call this my science platform. So let's see how we get on with this bad boy. Now the Type Bond test piece didn't break at 35.5 kilograms or the 78 and a quarter pounds. So I know I should be able to stack on a reasonable amount of weight before it gives up. And we'll need to bear in mind that this is a different weight distribution compared to the bucket, which would probably yield different results. So bear with me on this one, but at least the next one should all be pretty fair. Now I've got it to a point where I've got 61.5 kilograms or 135.5 pounds on this one, which is everything I've got and it's still not breaking. But I realize that I've got the position all wrong. I need to bring the chain more towards the end of the joint rather than in the middle. So after awkwardly dragging it along to the end, I plop that last five kilogram dumbbell back on and boom goes the dynamite. So I'm gonna chalk that one up to experience and give the test piece a whopping 61.5 kilograms or 135.5 pounds result. And as you can see here, the wood fibers are giving way on both pieces, but the control piece has taken a chunk out of the middle, whereas the frozen test piece seems to have been more smaller fibers across the board. Good result though. So let's move on to the Evo Stick PVA. And this is the one that came out all gloopy and thick. And you can see that in the way that the overspills dried on it here. You'll be pleased to know that I'm not gonna subject you to the fine detail of every single bit of all the rest of these tests. So we're gonna do the control and test piece side by side to see how we get on. So I stacked all the weights fairly confidently up to a point as I realized that the joints were gonna be pretty solid across the board. So we're just gonna focus in on when they start to get interesting. So here we are at 48.5 kilograms or 107 pounds for the control one, and we're only at 27.5 kilograms or 60.6 pounds for the test piece. We're gonna add on our last weights for each one with a final result of 53.5 kilograms or 118 pounds for the control piece and 35.5 kilograms or 78 and a quarter pounds for the test piece. And you can see it's much the same story with the fibers on this one as it was with the tight bond. You can see a dry white finish from the control piece again, but less so on the test piece. Let's test the Gorilla Polyurethane next. And you can see here that both glues foamed up nicely and there's no particular difference between the two. Couple that with the fact that it wasn't frozen solid and I've got high hopes for this one. We're joining in here with both holding strong at 53.5 kilograms or 98 pounds. Now that control one is making a few noises. So I think it's about ready to go. Interestingly though, the test piece seems strong. So I'll add an extra five kilograms on the test piece and then it's a five kilogram on both. And the test one did five kilograms better than the control one. That's crazy. The final results on the Gorilla test were 48.5 kilograms or 107 pounds on the control piece and 53.5 kilograms or 118 pounds on the test piece. The total weight wasn't as high as some of the others, but there's no doubt in my mind that this was entirely down to the wood rather than the glue, as these are the biggest chunks of wood we've had break off so far, especially on the control one. All right, we've got two glues left and I'm gonna do the cascomite next. I'm going to skip right on ahead with this one to 48.5 kilograms or 107 pounds. 
putting another five kilograms on to bring it up to 53.5 kilograms or 118 pounds. The last weight I have is an eight kilogram kettlebell. And whoa, <laughs> the test one went quick and the control one sounds like it's gonna go. And there we go. All in, both pieces glued up with the Cascomite maxed out at 61.5 kilograms or 135.5 pounds. And check out these results. The control piece has trashed the wood before the glue broke, so I reckon a stronger wood would have held up for much longer. The frozen test piece hadn't quite had the same effect, but still held up really well. All right, lastly, we're gonna test the CA glue. I'm constantly amazed by how good CA glue is, and if it wasn't so expensive, I'd be tempted to use it for absolutely everything. Let's see how it gets on. I've been putting weights on this, and it's holding ridiculously well. The test piece is slightly ahead at this stage, so let's drop this five kilogram on the control piece to bring the total weight on both to 53.5 kilograms. Then it's eight kilograms on the test piece, and boom, there goes both of them. Wow, that is amazing. With the control piece doing worse at 53.5 kilograms or 118 pounds, and the test piece at 61.5 kilograms or 135 and a half pounds. Both pieces rip chunks out of the wood again, so once again, I'm massively impressed with how strong superglue is. And here are the results. I put the cascomite in front because it's technically more of a wood glue, and the control and the test resulted exactly the same. Second place I gave to the superglue, or CA glue, because that control and test piece did better than the tight bond. But the issue with the tight bond was that was where I was testing the bucket, so I think you're pretty safe with any of those. Well, I can safely say I didn't expect those results. To be honest, I'd be quite happy recommending any of the three top glues to keep in your workshop, especially if there's a risk of it freezing. There's benefits and drawbacks to all of them though, so be sure to do your own research on what might suit your needs best. I think we're gonna bin this Ebo stick PVA glue though. 